स्थापकाय धर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठा रामकृष्णाय ते नम Shri Ramakrishna, if you are aware of male principle, you cannot ignore the female principle. He who is aware of father must also think of the mother. Keshav laughs. He who knows darkness also knows light. He who knows night also knows the day. He who knows happiness also knows misery. If you understand this, you understand this, don't you, Keshav? Yes, sir, I do. Sri Ramakrishna is explaining Prakriti and Purusha, the Chaitanya and Chichakti. Just like I have so many powers within me, I can talk, I can move, I can understand. All the shaktis of mind, when I sleep, when I enter into deep sleep, leaving all the layers, covering my soul, when I enter into deep sleep, all these powers of mind merge in me. They are one and the same when we enter the core of our existence. But the Chaitanya remains unaffected and the Shakti manifests. Chaitanya is the substratum and Shakti is what plays. If you accept Chaitanya, consciousness, you must accept its manifestation also. So when anything manifests one, that one totality, it reflects into two, duality. Whole thing becomes dual. I, you, this, that, here, there, all differences start with it. So Sri Ramakrishna is telling, if you accept one, you have to accept the other. If you accept sorrow, there must be misery, its counterpart. Keshav, because Keshav is on the deathbed. If you accept life, you must accept death also. Yes, sir, it's quite true. While walk, talking, Sri Ramakrishna regained normal consciousness of the world. He was in an intoxicated state of Divine Mother's awareness. With a smile on his face, he conversed with Kesha. The room full of men watched them eagerly and listened to their words. Everybody was amazed to find that neither Keshav nor Master inquired about each other's health. They talked only of God. Keshav is on deathbed and Thakur, the Lord of the Universe, is sitting in front of him and talking to him. Bhakta and Bhagavan, two aspects of reality and they are together there and we have to see how it they Sri Ramakrishna is fully aware that it is perhaps the last meet their last meeting and his extreme suffering condition was not able to come to Sri Ramakrishna till now after his hours of coming, Sri Ramakrishna is anxious to see him and he has come all the way to see him uh, hearing that he is extremely sick and nobody's world went to the bodily condition or their health. 
they are beyond they are talking about god as if their body is just a some case hanging over the soul and god master to kesha why do the members of brahmo samaj dwell so much on god's glories is there any great need to repeat such things as oh god thou hast created the moon the sun and the stars most people are filled with admiration for the garden only how few care to see its owner who is greater the garden or its owner shri ram krishna is explaining the essentials and non essentials time is short life is short human appears and disappears the path is long miles and miles to go before we come to rest to so after uh, why do the people so much glory of god they are not glory god himself what is to be attained is the master you are moving about in the garden looking at the leaves and fruits the master is to be seen and you are given up the master searching for master and moving about in the garden after a few drinks at tavern do i care to know how many gallons of wine are stored there one bottle is enough for me somebody is taking drinks once he is intoxicated what is the use of knowing how much the seller has got hmm. one bottle when i met narendra i never asked him who is your father how many houses does he own no other thing so narendra over the all of the details are unnecessary details a per thing to be see uh, we go to a shop any shop any buying anything we buy and come away after buying we will not go on asking what all other things are there i don't need them how much they are we never ask even a gold smith if you go we buy whatever a chain or a ring and come back how many varieties you have how much of total gold you have uh, how much you can supply uh, we never ask because unnecessary details like that hmm. shall i tell you the truth man loves his riches so he thinks that god loves his too he thinks of that god will be pleased if he glorify his riches once shambhu said to me please bless me that i may die leaving my riches at the feet of god i ans- answered these are riches only to you what riches can you offer to god to him these are mere dust and straw hmm shambhu malik the successor of mathurnath <coughs> hmm shall i tell you the truth man loves his riches so he thinks god to loves his riches but he is after love of his bhakta devotee anybody offers him love love purifies the soul of all dirt that is holding him away from god why does god love the love of devotees 
does he lack love? Has he anything lacking? But love, he wants the devotee to come him to him. But there are some shackles. He is not able to release himself and gives himself totally, unconditionally to God, that God can possess him as mine. So love for God removes all these small shackles holding him back. Love makes him independent of all his duties and responsibilities, possessions and bondages. He lives as belonging to God in the same family with the same things. He doesn't change anything. He neither changes the family condition nor his positions nor he throws away the relationships. Everything will remain. And yes, the love has made him to belong to God forever and God belong to him forever. As belonging to God now, he lives in the same family as, when, as long as life exists, doing all things as he was doing. But he's not there. Physically he's there, he's totally, and he belongs to God. God has to take care of every bit of his, whatever he's going to do, think or feel, his fulfillment, everything. And he's there eternally belonging to the Master. So that God wants. Love for God releases him from all things that is holding him back. Hmm. Once Shambhubali said to me, please bless me that I may die leaving my riches at the feet of God. I answered, these are riches only to you. What riches can you give to God? To him, these are mere dust and straw. Once a thief broke into the temple of Vishnu and robbed the image of the jewels. Maturnath Babu and I went to temple to see what was the matter. Address the image, addressing the image, Mathur said, bitterly, what a shame, Lord. You are so worthless. The thief took all the ornaments from your body and you could not do anything about it. Thereupon I said to Mathur, shame on you. How improper your words are. To God, the jewels you talk so much about are only lumps of clay. Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, is his consort. Do you mean to say that he should spend sleepless nights because a thief has broken your few rupees? You must not say such things. Hmm. How ignorant we are and how much we care for petty things that are not going to be there. As we analyze and see a little away, Viveka awakens, everything looks clearly that they are all perishable and the uncertainty of tomorrow. I was going on Narvada Parikrama on foot, a short distance. I might have covered huge, fine, ancient temples on the banks of Narmada are broken down once upon a time in their glory. And no people around, no villages, all have been washed away many, many times by the floods of river. The sign of there was a village also is no more. Temple stands of the stone, broken and dilapidated, huge thing. There is nobody to light a lamp or offer a flower. Temple stands without proper roofing. 
and it's all stone, strong stone structure. Oh, once upon a time, a village flourished here. Once upon a time, a kingly person was looking after here. He had built, built this huge edifice and today he is in ruins. How everything enters into the earth back, emerges from earth as huge buildings and goes back into the earth to become earth again. So when we see everything gives you wisdom, knowledge, don't hoard anything or say anything belongs to you. It is there with you today uh, for general understanding say it belongs to you but in the heart of heart know that it is going back to its uh, source one day or other. The whole building is going to collapse and go back to earth. You can see war fields how they are crushing down and washing and getting out. Mm. So this wisdom, wisdom dawns, everything comes to. Take for instance a devotee, one looks on God exactly as one's own inner feeling. Whatever you feel, that is a now even I see in my life itself, whatever people like, they want to give to me. Anybody's house I go, some people will give chapati because they like chapati. Some people give me give rice because they like rice. It's all the curries, this, that, that, their taste, their, that, find their delicacy. If I go to another house, it is their delicacy and they think that would make me happy or satisfied. Because they like, they think I also like that. But I have my own things too. I like because they like it. To satisfy them, they will be pleased. They like my eating this. But actually they give me what they like and consider as supreme. It may not be so for me. Mm. But whatever, same way to God also, they offer. And the meat eaters will offer meat to God. Vegetarian will be offer vegetarian food to God. Same God. He enjoys meat there from the hands of meat eaters. And it is a delicacy for God because God doesn't have any limitation. And those who are giving vegetarian food, that also equally joyfully and only thing be a devotee. But God is able to accept all things, whichever devotee with devotion he gives. Patram Pushpam Phalam Doyam Bhaktya Prayachati Whoever gives Bhaktya, whatever he gives, even leaf, a drop of water, a fruit or whatever it is, whatever the devotee gives, that he takes. What all thoughts they pass through, what all st stresses and strain a devotee, but he has none to say, none to plead, none to share except God. Devotees have the only in uh, Chennai Ashram. There was dearth of food. The cheapest material they would purchase from the market, instead of throwing away 
they are giving at small price and cheapest thing they would purchase and bring and offer to Sri Ramakrishna. A day came, there was nothing to offer, nor had any money to offer. Buy. Then they think, oh, today nothing is there to offer. With tears, the Swami is sitting, what to offer? Doesn't matter, I can fast, but what to give to? Uh, the deity in the shrine. Then in uh, pain he says to God, today I don't have anything and I have nothing to offer here on the banks of ocean except sand here. Now the last thing is I have to offer the sand to you and eat the sand. Hmm. So, and within an hour or so, a devotee has come with so, so many items, mm, bringing tears to his eyes again. When there is dirt also, nothing is there also, he shares his pain to go with God. When everything comes also, he shares his joy with God. So that is the devotee's condition. But that God accepts, you see. He thinks that Divine Mother eats goat. So he starters one for her. Again, the devotee endowed with rajas cooks rice and various dishes for mother. But the sattvic devotee does not make any outer show of his worship. People don't even know he is worshipping. If he has no flowers, he worships God with mere Ganges water and leaves of bale tree. His food offering to the deity consists of sweet and puffed rice or a few candies. Occasionally he cooks a little rice pudding for the deity. There is also another class of devotees, those who are beyond the three gunas. They have the nature of a child, three gunas Their worship consists of, consists in chanting the God's name, just His name. Hmm. They are like children. They are Tiguna. They neither have Rajas, Tamas or... Uh, they just call on God, repeating His name and His presence they feel. Dukesha, with a smile. Why is that you are ill? There is a reason for it. Many spiritual feelings have passed through your body. Therefore, it has fallen ill, Abba. Many spiritual feelings have passed through your body. Therefore, it has fallen ill. At the same time, an emotion is roused. One understands very little about it. The blow that is that it del delivers to the body is felt only after a long while. I have seen bigger steams going on the Ganges. At the time, hardly one notices their passing. But oh my, what a terrific noise it is heard after a while when the waves splash against the banks. Perhaps a piece of the bank breaks loose and falls into the water. Uh, Sri Ramakrishna is explaining the effects of the sadhana and spiritual experiences. He is passing through an important phase. Why are you ill? 
he is he has been reduced just to skin and bone all are wondering how is he is standing and moving to that extent holding the wall he is moving coming to shri ram krishna in that condition shri ram krishna is talking of god and god alone and he is also listening and sitting and they are also except god no other things came but now shri ram krishna is explaining to him this question always comes why do i suffer like this having taken refuge in god thinking of god why has this condition has come to me even a devotee wonders and thinks about it i have not done any sin i have not harmed anybody and why did this, why is this one of the explanation we give is pending karma is there you might have achieved great success in spiritual life you might have advanced and trans transform so many souls to go in the path of god but the past karmas do not leave you and you will have to yeah, you are experiencing that doesn't matter but shri ram krishna is telling no it is not the karmic effects but the effects of the sai spiritual currents that were flowing in your body hmm that it is like 440 volts going through a 220 volts bulb it fuses like that the more higher experiences that that body and mind can bear passes through is explain the how its effect will be there and the example of a ship going through the river and after a while the whole when ship is going in nothing is see when it is going behind the waves that it has created goes and splashes on the borders and perhaps some part flows parts skip down also om shanti 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 hari hi om tat sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu